Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two here in a special three between LGD Gaming and VG Gaming for the ESL1 Hamburg qualifiers from China. Game number one. LGD pretty much just curb stomped VG Gaming. Not a pretty sight. Not a pretty sight at all. Arme went 11 0 and uh, 10 million on the Chaos Knight. And uh, maybe on the Shadow Fiend, bought a Mask of Manus, died a couple of times, and uh, killed everyone. That was pretty much the story of the game. Did not go well for Vici at all. This time, though, completely different draft from them. Whereas LGD have exactly the same as they did previously. AA Earthshaker. They've got their 5 and their 4. Potentially the 3 Earthshaker can still rotate between the lanes. And play that kind of flexible role, depending on what you need from him. Whereas Vici Gaming, this time around, they ban the Night Stalker. And they go for the Lich. Ah, uh, no. No, Lich was banned by LGD. They remaining. go for the Puck and a Tusk. I was just looking at the Tusk and thinking, oh, you're so icy, Five you've got like seconds. frosty hands, and you've got... You know, a bit dead. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Tusk just linked with Lich in my brain for some reason. Tusk and Puck. So Tusk is very good at disrupting team fights and exceptionally good at chasing down these squishier people, cancelling blink daggers with shards, scouting with a sigil, there are lots of nice things you can do and fulfills a very similar role to the Night Stalker in what he does through the laning stage and into the mid game. You basically hunt people down, you start fights, and you are that kind of you know, frontline tanky brawler that gets things going, walking into your enemies and trying to bait them into a fight that maybe they can't take. So to deal with that, what do you look towards from LGD? Maybe some sustain, maybe someone who doesn't really care about Tusk running at them, someone tanky again. Well, they can't have the Void or the CK. Both of those heroes who can tank up and play elusively in these team fights, both removed. As Vici decide for the Shadow Shaman now? So with the picks that they'll pr maybe be able to get with the Puck and the Tusk, they can then convert into Towers or Roshan, just big objectives after winning a team fight, which some teams, they do struggle with if they don't have a draft seconds, that can follow really. through. So after a team fight, you go play Serpent Wards down near a tower or in the Five pit, and you take that objective pretty simply. LGD, what's your plan? Do you go for the trade play? Do you go for some pushing of your own? Say, okay, Vici, if you want to play like this, we'll group up as five and make sure that you can't get those pick-offs, and you can't get that pick-and-play style to take objectives. I could equally go for some split push. AA with Ice Blast at long range initiation, heroes like Ember Spirit, Invoker, these heroes that can kind of start fights or just have that global presence from across the map are incredibly potent with the Ancient Apparition. Uh, and you add in the Earthshaker, he's kind of, he's like a semi-global hero himself, you know? He'll have Blink Force, he'll have a Shadow Blade maybe later on Radiant as well. Team. With those items, all of a sudden you'll be jumping around and... Oh. On there's another semi-global hero. The blink is such long range that you're basically just flying around the map. You've got you know, pretty good macro maneuverability through that blink from the co-op. You'll have a blink on Earthshaker. And you've got two heroes that can be activated by that AA Ice Blast if they land it. Both of them are very good at killing off and picking off heroes. Five seconds remaining. So I do go for a bit of the old sniping action. It's all about execution, though. Ease of execution is very important in drafts nowadays, unless you are literally a team of 9k players like Liquid. So something VG Gaming to look for. Tusk is struggling now to gank the mid lane. Won't have an easy time against the Queen of Pain, who can just blink away from the ice shards. But Puck Tusk against Quop Earthshaker or Quop plus one, whoever that four roll is going to be, they're not going to have an easy time. Queen of Pain struggles against the puck in the mid lane no longer that kind of 50 50 a little more puck favored nowadays with all the buffs coming through to it so we're still looking for an off laner now from vici gaming we've got the lanham tusk and there's the omni knight for old 11. young 11 now as he's called he's renamed he's no longer old he's now young seconds remaining oh I better not be getting sick my Five nose is starting to block remaining. up I can feel it coming but I can't get sick now I've got so much casting to do we've got Chinese qualifiers 
and uh, what for today and tomorrow. So we finish Chinese qualifiers tomorrow. Then on the 21st, Radio's we start with the Southeast Asian CIS Europe, NA, South America. Did I miss one? No, I didn't, right? China, Southeast Asia, Europe, CIS, South America, NA. That's six. Yeah, that's right. Ten seconds remaining. And all of those will be happening from Thursday through to Sunday. Five so we've got a remaining. long week here for ESL1 Hamburg qualifiers. I'll have plenty of streams for all of the Dota action as well. Now, Monkey King again from LGD. Still unsure where this hero is heading. Again, in the previous game, I mentioned how popular and how incredibly strong the one role Monkey King can be with LGD. the ability to flash farm Down with a Battle Fury. But it looks like Vichy Gaming do expect that to be offlane Monkey King again for FY in that offlane for LGD. As they ban out the Sven. And what what does that mean for them? They're banning out the Sven. Usually that means some form of illusion hero. We don't see Meepo in China LGD. at all, really. And the Weaver is removed at this point, but maybe it's just more of the tempo thing. With the God Strength, someone to hit the towers. Someone to pair up with, ah, yeah. Someone to pair up with the AA in lane. Someone to pressure towers to find kills. Sven could have done very well this game just with a blink dagger mask of madness, honestly. With the amount of damage they've got, they could absolutely slam people. Five seconds remaining. So what is another good hero to fit into that kind of role? Well, Troll Warlord is still available, and LGD go for the Terror Blade instead. One of Arme's favorite heroes. That's going to be the TB for them down on the safe lane. You might see the Mask of Manus Terror Blade, which has become the kind of signature, the trademark of Arme in the safe lane. As the fifth pick from Vici Gaming, they are still looking for their one roll hero. Remaining. Now, conventionally, against the Terror Blade, you remaining. want someone who's not going to get sundered, who's not going to worry about illusions, because what illusion clear do you have? Ether Shock and Puck spells? Not the best right now. You need something a bit beefier. That's going to be the tiny. You may now select your heroes. Tiny, tiny, tiny. So, paparazzi tiny. In the safe lane. Lots of nuke damage. Pretty beefy. If he goes Aghanim Scepter, he can deal with the TB illusions. Sure, fair enough. But it's an interesting hero to pick up at this point. Without an IO behind him. Tiny hasn't seen much play. We had him the other day in one of the qualifier in one of the um in one of the I guess round of eight games. It was offlane tiny. I can't for the life of me remember who it was. Might have been for the dream. That sounds about right. I think it was I think it was for the dream that played offlane tiny. They had visage tiny clockwork, and the plan was to like toss people, you know, with tiny back into cogs or like towards visage familiars and stuff like that. Didn't really work out, but this game is going to be much more of the conventional core carry tiny where you're building big items to just you know, club people around with a tree that you're, you're wandering around with. We'll see what Paparazzi can do with it. Into game we go. Game number two here. Best of threes all the way through. Grand final is a best of five, though. And the LGD are one game up. One more game, and they are through to the semifinals. We don't quite know just yet who they're going to be facing. This is the first quarter final, of course. So we've got some time. Smokes not used there by either of the four roll heroes. Tusk is he a little bit slower. He doesn't have his boots. Oh, hello. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Earthshaker. Yeah, I'll get out of here. Punched by the Orb of Venom Tusk. And he will be forced out of this Radiant Jungle. And likely Tusk will just be able to deward this. We'll place his sentry down here. Where are you going, Tusky? Tusky baby. Oh, Shadow Shaman wants to use... Oh, no, he gave a sentry to Shadow Shaman. Okay. Go on. Place, place your sentry. Place your sentry. He doesn't want to place the sentry. So it's going to be maybe Queen of Pain mid... And they're sending this Terror Blade into an aggro lane, it looks like, as Monkey King's going to be in the off lane, 1v1 in the Omni Knight. LGD trying to get the better matchups here. Omni going to struggle against the Monkey King in this 1v1. 
As Car 98K goes in with a couple of slaps, he's got his passive up already. The Omni begins. not going to deal too well here. Monkey does completely demolish the majority of 1v1 melee matchups. As First Blood is drawn down on the bottom lane, Shadow Shaman's just found by a, a good fisher there, it appears. So aggro tri lane from LGD and the lane swaps begin. Omni Knight's being sent down towards the bottom lane. We'll try and shift people up towards the top. Tiny, the long wander up there. But they've moved the Earthshaker in behind this Monkey King already. Not going to be caught out. By any form of lane swaps or mini ganks that happen. He is being forced back a little bit here with an avalanche. Good Fisher from the Earthshaker. Make sure the Monkey King survives through that. So what was it? Just Ether Shock a couple of times and this Monkey King's almost dead. Finally with that insane attack damage though. Able to deny under tower relatively nicely there. Maybe this Monkey King I want to swap lanes in a bit, but I think this is fine. For now, Terra Blade's farming really nicely bottom lane. Omni Knight gets one last hit in uh, about a minute and a half of gameplay. Not the best for him. But you've left this mid lane in a straight 1v1. Pocket gets Queen of Pain. And Ori, very skilled. Very, very skilled. Going to match up nicely against Maybe here. Going to get a couple of the range creeps that are already leading up against the Queen of Pain, which at this point kind of expected in this matchup. Puck, 73 damage against the 63 of Queen of Pain. So you've got that 10 damage advantage. Got a nice attack animation, nice projectile, and you've got the double nukes as well. The silence waning rift, so good against the Queen of Pain to stop the blinks. So not only can you lane dominate and look for CS, last hits, harass, but you can even threaten kills once you get to like level 4, level 5. You can pressure really hard into the Queen of Pain and really, really stick it to her. Ah, my bad. Oh, I fixed the overlays and I missed some kills. Earthshaker is being chased though. Monkey King as well as Shadow Shaman both brought down. Cappuccino being chased in behind this tier one. Tusk wants to finish the job, but Cappuccino is quick with the boots up. He's being slowed down here, but the Orb of Venom wears off and now the Monkey King. Oh, the toss! They get the vision, the creeps thrown in. Monkey King finds the kill on the Tusk. What an insane fight there between them. LGD on the dire side, Vici Gaming on the Radiant. I'll just swap them around as well. Don't worry, don't worry. It's only five in the morning. <laughs> the brain's a little bit slow to start. I, I do apologize. Everything will, everything will get better, guys. Everything gets better with age. Double null, double null. Still though, that damage advantage that the puck has So good in this mid lane, you can see it now. 8 CS advantage Puck has over the Queen of Pain. Rain drops being forced to be bought there, maybe knows that the threat of that kill potential is always available. Earth Shaker. Fisher is thrown. Tiny has a toss, but he's not gonna use it just yet. Now in comes nighttime. This is where Tusk maybe starts to shine. He's been lurking around. Level two, waiting for a go in onto mid. Ori with the level one waning rift really wants to kill the Queen of Pain here, but with the rain drops up, they need a snowball to land and maybe an ice shards to follow. So they'll play from the fog, hide in these trees, and maybe wait for, uh, wait for their moment to actually go in for the hit. Omni Knight, 7-0. Not having the best time, but top lane, K98K goes in with a boundless strike. They've got no Fisher anymore, but Paparazzi in a lot of trouble. The Monkey King jumps down, but they split, they spread the action. Cappuccino's blocked him in, the Tiny can't move, and Monkey King 
gets a double kill in this top lane. FY on the Monkey King. Potentially here going to straight up just win the game from this kind of three roll position, but playing in the safe lane as Ame has a Terror Blade, these triple cores. You have three core heroes that are all farming really nicely now as LGD, whereas you look at the Radiant team and what do you have? It is just the Puck. It is only Ori that's farming. 11-4, 9-0, and zero, Tiny and Omni Knight. They don't have two pennies to rub between them. I do apologize, there's also no ticket on this game. Nice Jinx Coil, Queen of Pain. Orb is gonna get dodged, in jumps Ori, Enchant Totem blocked out by the face shift and Ori will survive. There's another Fisher in two seconds, but I think the Puck should be just fine. Yeah, face shift's a little bit of the tick damage from the Shadow Strike and just walks off the rest of it. Jump in onto Omni. He doesn't have Repel, only two points in the Purification, so the Cold Feet Balance Strike combo looks like it will connect, and with the TV popping meta, he'll find that takedown. Omni Knight brought to his knees as we have to pray to a different god now. Top lane, they're looking for maybe a little bit of action here. Terror Blaze TP top with his Metamorphosis, and they're also shifting in Cappuccino. Yeah, on this Earth Shaker wants to get an Enchant Totem onto Paparazzi, maybe? No? Move on forward, look for the Shadow Shaman. He's very deep. Metamorphosis still ongoing. He zaps the illusion. In comes the enchant. Cancels the shackles. Two-man fissure. Blow up the raster. Now the TB. The long-range attacks into Paparazzi. A few more hits is all they need. They've got the Orb of Venom ticking on over. Tiny, very low on HP. One enchant totem. And he will go down, but he goes for the TP. Can he do it? Yao barely misses out on the kill. Good TP from Paparazzi. Saves his life as the TB is going to be okay. Tusk was lurking around looking for that backstab. But Ame on the Terror Blade, nicely done, hides in the trees, waits for his AA to bring a salve out, and he will regenerate up nicely. And Tusk has been spotted here. 3v1, low HP. Down he goes, he makes an igloo, but this is going to melt soon. They toss them back inside. Get in there. Go and eat some penguins or whatever you do inside. Tiny is very low on mana now at this point. And the Shadow Shaman runs forward into the illusion of the Terror Blade. Quelling Blades, the sentry though. So they're looking for an Observer Ward or something in their mid lane. Queen of Pain now. That orb from Puck has to jaunt to it. Screen misses. Nice face shift. They turn around. Sonic Wave is ready. Right clicks come in. There's not enough to kill him off. Ori gets the nice turnaround there. Queen of Pain, Pain playing very aggressively. Thought that the Earthshaker maybe could help her out find a kill. That was very, very tight between the two of them. The 1v1 between Ori and maybe just coming down to fisticuffs. Basically turned into two melee heroes there as they battled on top of this ramp. No mana remaining on Tiny Shackles. Tries to buy him some time, but it only makes it worse. Ori goes for the jaunt away. Very quickly jumps to it as well. The Illusion gets a little bit of safety there for the puck. But you look at this so far. Last hits tell one story. Net worth. Tiny slowly ahead of the Queen of Pain. A little bit unexpected there. But maybe has had a bit of a struggle in that mid lane. Only now bringing out the bottle after... Raindrops and nulls have been spammed out and purchased non-stop. It is a little bit awkward here, though. You do wonder what the Radiant are kind of waiting for. You know, what, what is their... What, what is their primary objective? What is their goal here? What are they waiting for to achieve that goal? Shadow Blade on Tiny is being built and maybe he'll get closer here. The Monkey King turns though and battles with his passive proc. He gets the kill. Damage galore as the purification wasn't ready from the early night. Now the shackles come out of the AA and jump forward to the Monkey King. They need this echo. No, it's not ready. No, it's level six yet. And Champ's not going to do the job either. Omninat has that point in the repel. So he runs on forwards towards Cappuccino. The Fisher and Chant, it's ready. He misses. The Balance Strike doesn't know. Car 98k. FY on this Monkey King. Currently 6-1-1. One, one. Slaying Vichy Gaming.
is under attack. Oh, Escaper is Yao. Okay, thank you very much. So I've, I've had them two mixed up. I've had those two mixed up. So this is Victoria, and this is Yao. Thank you very much. Dyer's middle tower is under Got it. attack. Yes. Mm, Victoria doesn't always play the four. We've seen Yao play plenty of Earthshaker, but I'd, I'd be inclined to agree. But AA is probably Yao as Cappuccino. This is Victoria then, found by the Puck in the Tusk. Has an Echo Slam, but you don't really want to use it here without much to gain. Just going to try and lead them on a merry little goose chase through the jungle as the rest of his team getting jobs done elsewhere. TV's farming jungle, making sure to dodge the tiny. Quop has a bit of a free time in the mid lane. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Let's have a look. Escaper. So you've got like a blue dragon as your profile picture. Let's go to Dota. You are exactly Dyer's right. You are exactly right. This AA is 100% Yao. Well, Tusk aiming for the AA, but Yao is hiding. FY up on top of this tree, waiting for his moment to go in. The TPs come to this bottom lane, and Yao finally dies to the purification, but the bounce strike will force the cold feet to hit, and the sonic wave makes short work of each game. Very good rotation in. The Yao bait, AA draws them in. They get sucked in behind the tier one, and they go for a two-for-one trade. Not the best for them as Omni dies there. And lots of gold goes the way of Quop and Monkey. Puck does get the tier one mid as an addition to that trade. But giving the Queen of Pain a little bit of a lifeline here, a bit of a breath of fresh air coming back into this game. And she struggled so, so difficult in that mid lane up against the Puck. Oh, hello, Queen of Pain, silenced up, they've got no saves, Quop, Dream Coil of Now, the Ice Blast does fly out, but not going to connect. Vigi Gaming go in, they get out very quickly, jump forward here from FY's Monkey King, he wants to battle, gets a couple of hits in onto the Tusk, there we go, slows him up, hits him down, kills him off, car 98k, beautiful stuff, as they probably know there's an Observer Ward around here as well, like kill on the Queen of Pain. A big indication of that. But things have slowed down now. The Radiant are finally getting some farming time. Paparazzi up to 3,600 net worth. He's actually been overtaken by the Queen of Pain just a little bit thanks to that bottom fight, which the Queen of Pain helped win so easily. Paparazzi has been spotted though, he's been closed in on. This is perfect, just chain stunned into oblivion. There is no escape from this. Uh, goodbye. He does hit rock bottom. Does he buy an item? He doesn't, 900 gold in the bank. Loses out even more. Queen of Pain now up to 4,400 net worth. Veil vale is finished. Good, good timing. Good timing. Considering the laning matchup, considering the, the pace and the state of this game, you know, Monkey King and Terrorblade, they are both farming much, much easier, but also much safer. TB and Monkey have been given much safer lanes. That's how they've got so much farm, and it's going to be Shadowblade for Monkey. Terrorblade is building into the Dragonlance, and now they find the bot lane kill onto Omni Knight. Repel is there, though. They need the physical damage for the Monkey King to finish this one off. He jumps up from the trees, but he's brought down immediately with the Dream Claw. Now the Echo is thrown in. The Monkey King is dead. They get a two for nothing. Eight times kill streak. I mean, a K98 with an eight times is super sick, but now you're just taking it away from him. Overzealous, very greedy dive there. Looking for a kill on an Omni Knight, but great rotations in. Ori again. Perfect place, perfect time. Veil and Blink ready to go. What can you do with the Blink, though? Illusions on this mid-tier one. You jump in, clear out this wave. Take a couple of punches from the real Terrorblade, though, as Queen of Pain wants to finish this tower. 
wants to finish this tier one. Oh, they know there's no dream core, so they're trying to bring this down, but the deny is there from Ori. Putt again on the money. Ice Blast flies on through. If that hits the Omni Knight, he might die, but they all dodge, they spread, and they don't get hit. Tiny now up to 2,000 gold. He's found himself a good thousand or so in the past minute. Some reasonably good farming there for him. And Radiant killed a tower. Was that the tier one? Uh, was that the tier one top a while ago. Which tower was that? And then Radiant structures got fortified after. That's not. Is that? Oh, is that the deny? Does the deny show as Radiant killed a tower? It doesn't. It doesn't show here, right? The deny. I've never actually noticed that before. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. I wonder. I'm, I'm going to test that later. Radiant maybe maybe someone in chat knows. It's like technically is a radiant hero killing a radiant tower, but I feel like technically it's oh the snap of the coil, queen of pain found again. But I feel like technically it's dire killing a radiant tower, right? A one for one trade means things will just taper off here. Monkey King should be able to escape. They've got Earthshaker in behind trying to farm his blink. He's about 1300 away from it. Tusk, he looks alone on his bot lane trying to leech experience, but there's a puck behind him. Ori ready. Jumps in the back. Looks for the AA. Finds the nuke damage in. AA about to get blown up, but actually finds an escape route out as the Fisher perfectly placed. The TP from Yao. Oh, not quite good enough. Tusk gets the punch back onto Monkey King. Now he's in trouble. He has his ultimate and a shadow amulet, but then jumps the puck. Orb is there and another waiting lift. Ori clearing up. Might even get a triple kill. Earthshaker in a ton of trouble. Goes for the echo, but the donk isn't enough. It's a kill for Rasta as they get a three for nothing. Vichy Gaming is straight back in this now. 13 to 7. They're in the lead with net worth. They're the ones taking these fights, and the tempo is being set by them. And another tier one lines their pockets with even more gold. Looking at the Shadow Shaman, trying to get into the Blink Dagger, but the puck is starting to get a little bit out of control. One thing they don't have control over, though, is this Terra Blade, which is why the Shadow Blade on Tiny right now is so important. If Paparazzi can go and look for this kill, find the burst damage in onto the Terra Blade with a little bit of help from you know, maybe the Tusk, maybe the Puck, just another one of these heroes that can nuke down the Terra Blade's 1300 HP in a second or so before he can get that Sunder off. Or just the chain stun to be able to hold him in place for long enough so he can't do so. It's going to be a huge fight for them. Here we go. Let's get Maybe involved. He's got Veil on the Queen of Pain. AA Ice Blast ready again. They do need to find these snipes, but it's the Shadow Blade and the Monkey King that's going to be the one that comes into play. Finding the Omni Knight. Fisher into Ice Blast. That is literally the simplest kill you will ever see. Well chained, well timed, and perfect. Disable some damage. Come out of LGD. That means Elshaker gets pushed closer to Blink Dagger. Dyer's top tower is under attack. But Omni Knight does have that hand of Midas. He's climbing the net worth. He's actually now overtaken the Queen of Pain, in fact, as Tiny races up on ahead. Maybe starting to struggle here a little bit. With the farming speed of the Tiny and the Omni Knight being able to clear camps and Midas these creeps. Sick balance strike, six sonic wave, three man hit, snowballs here, saves up the puck. But they've got this Fisher land with the ice blast. Puck is out, looks like he blinked away. Didn't get sent into the snowball. They get the two kills. That's a number of ulties expended though. Sonic wave, monkey ult, ice blast. Ice blast low cooldown. We'll be back up in about 20 seconds. But Monkey King and Queen of Pain without their ulties for about a minute and a half to two minutes, respectively.
That really hurts. All Earthshaker wants is to farm his Blink Dagger, and Puck just comes in and nukes him with a Dagon. That's really not fair. A prize. This Puck actually is a monster. Dagon Puck now. So much nuke damage. And you're closing in on that level 20 with a 10% spell amplification. Ori God. Oopsie. Rasta was on a bit of a warding mission there, it looks like. Gone for a bit of a suicide play. Queen of Pain found by the Tiny, though. Not enough damage to burst her down. Looked like it. With a punch into Avatos combo. But strength treads will be enough to save the Quop. Hey, change to Adji, buddy. I guess you're full HP anyway. Calculated. Calculated. Hasn't put the veil back in, though. Oh. <laughs> That's not so calculated. Oh, blink again. There we go. Interesting move. I guess the play was to blink down here, then shift it in so you don't have the cooldown on the veil. But you, you could have done that at the shop as well. It was a bit weird for maybe there. I, I don't know if he's... Feeling a bit tilted after the laning phase. Definitely struggling in net worth and itemization. Trying to move towards the Yules after the Veil. Has had a couple of six Sonic Waves, though, over the past five minutes or so. They need to find another big team fight, though. Get this Terror Blade involved, whether it is through split pushing or an actual brawl. Get the Blink Dagger on Earthshaker. He's 500 gold away from it. Keep the split push going with the Monkey King, heading into Diffusal Blade. Just apply pressure across the map, but... Also, making sure you don't get picked off by the puck, because that is a real, real concern. Interesting. Monkey King's in trouble here. Monkey, actually, Monkey King's dead. Like, you're not, kill you're not killing the Tusk. By them? Blink Dagger Tusk baiting in FY Monkey King. Allowing the TPs to come in from the rest of Ichi Gaming. Clearing up what is potentially the one-roll hero here. I, I guess Monkey is more the two-roll in this game. TB has farm priority. Monkey King has farm priority too. And Queen of Pain is just like, well, I'll farm where you guys aren't farming. I'll, I'll try and find... Somewhere. I'll try and find anywhere. Just to get a bit of gold. To flow into me. It actually goes for the 12% cooldown reduction and not the 90 GPM, interestingly enough. It feels like the spells are more important to line up in timings rather than the gold that comes in through the other talent. I, I, I can understand that. When you've got you know low cooldown, AA Ice Blast, Earthshaker, Echo Slam is, what, 130 seconds? 110? So y you're going to time up you know, your monkey, quop, earthshaker ults to be ready pretty much on time every time. If you use one, if you, like, if you use all of them and you cycle to the next fight, you got all of them back up. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. This is not going to be a quick Roshan on the Radiant. They do have... Ah, uh, they've got Solar Crest on the Omni, so that will help them, yeah. They throw the Serpent Wards in to make sure it speeds up just a little bit. Scans and scans the Dire. They scan the Roshan Pit and the Radiant scan the High Ground, but the Radiant scan came a little bit early, so the Dire know that the Radiant are inside Roshan, dropping low, down to 700 HP. The Dire, they're coming in, though. There's the Dagon. Puck slams into the Monkey King, kills him off. Ori up on the High Ground now, though, as Paparazzi takes the Aegis to Blink Echo. Finds one, but Omni's still alive. Gets the GA out. Cost now taken down. Queen of Pain has to blink away. The toss is there. On an illusion. Paparazzi in trouble. Gonna lose his Aegis here, maybe to the tiny illusion. Yep. It is a final killing blow from the TB. But Queen of Pain puts herself into a bit of danger here. Blinks forward aggressively, screams onto the Omni Knight. Tiny Avatos at the ready. He needs to get the stun in. They've got her hex into Avatos. Kill off the Queen of Pain. The Terror Blade's still battling in the back here. Ori Puck. Ready to jump in at a moment's notice, but Terra Blade has the Sunder. Very, very spooky. He's also got a Shadow Blade on this Terra Blade. 
Dragonlance Manta plus the Shadow Blade as that fight it probably works out for the Dire, honestly. You know, Golden XP-wise, little, uh, kind of little differences here and there. Overall, you know, it is a Radiant win. But taking the Aegis away is, you know, of such high monetary value that you kind of have to give it to the Dire. Keeping their Terror Blade alive, losing the Monkey King and Queen of Pain so early on, you can only see how fights can go well for them later. And then that Aegis, it's meant to secure Tier 2's and maybe a high ground push here for the Radiant with that Aegis, Aghanim's Shadow Blade on Tiny. They wanted to go and take tier 3s, but now they can't. Holding a smoke here, the Tusk. Clear out midway, dip back towards your shrine. Go and smoke with maybe three or four of you. Hey, strewn there. Earthshaker pops the smoke. Oh, Dar Observer would go down. They find the AA. Monkey King's TPing in, but he, yeah, he will cancel. He will cancel. Earthshaker might still be caught, but he's gone down to the southeast and has found a nice little avenue of escape as Monkey King also can jump up on the trees and find a little bit of a little bit of a route out there. Decides to clear another creep wave very aggressively, but yeah, jumps on the trees and should be able to just sit here for a little longer. Or oh, a you sneaky devil. Try and go for another play there. Mid lane. Oh, kills the tower top, but it's the Rasta found by the Fisher and the Terror Blade. Slaying the Shadow Shaman Paparazzi. He wants the Tiny. He wants the ES. And he'll find him with the help of Ori there. Clears him up beautifully as the Tier 2 mid lane nearly brought down by the Serpent Wars. The fight continues. Tiny Shadow Struck. The Dream Coil onto the Queen of Pain, but here comes the Monkey Ult. They get the Banner Strike down. This Omni Knight gets the G8 in time, though. Physical damage not going to do anything, but the Ice Man's running wave definitely will. Ooh, baby. Kills him off. Now Tusk in trouble. Cleared up by the rest of the Dire team. Paparazzi escapes through the north, and Ori escapes to the west. But these fights, very scrappy. And the Dire team, time and time again, coming out on top, little by little, scraping their way through these fights. And this is probably one of the bigger ones now where they get some momentum their way. Queen of Pain can build into an aggressive item. Orchid. We can see the Shadow Blade being built into a Silver Edge here by the Terror Blade. So he's got that one to get rid of the Craggy of Tiny. Such an annoying ability when you're a melee hero, potentially trying to battle up against it. Or just the Terror Blade within, uh, within that range. What, what, what is it? What is the range? Tiny. Does Craggy not have a rage anymore? Okay, I'm, I'm dodging to wicking this in a second because there's a fight over by the shrine. Dream Coil catches four for the ice blast. Oh, Terror Blade found a kill before it even happens. Silence from the puck comes on in. Has another blink and a face up as well. The day goes there, but the blink echo comes through the puck. Mori caught in place. Held by the CC of Vici Gaming, of LGD Gaming. Vici now in trouble. They're brought down one by one. Three for one. The AA, the only casualty. As LGD once more, mid game decision making, absolutely peak performance. Come out on top, and Vici just don't know what hit them. Tiny nowhere to be seen, still farming over in the dire jungle, and Shadow Shaman limping down towards the bottom lane. Let's have a look now. Tiny Dota 2 wiki. Please don't tell me I'm insane, guys. Can only proc against melee units. Okay, so I'm not insane. But it used to have a range, I'm sure. Maybe I'm just absolutely crazy. Oh, no, no, no. 7.00. That, that's when it happened. See, this is, this is how dumb casters are, you know. You don't see a hero in a while. It comes back in, gets played once or twice, and you're just like, how does that skill work? Duh. So, remove the 300 range max proc distance. Only affects melee units. Sick. Okay, thank you very much, Dota2Wiki. We did it. We learnt a thing today. 
We learned a thing. Amazing. So that Craggy is actually not good this game. Right? Like it gives him a bit of armor, but it literally does nothing this game. What earth shit? I, I guess Monkey King? He's a melee. Yeah, I guess he's a melee hero, so it, it counts, right? So Monkey King can get hit by the by the craggy proc or an, an earth shaker who's trying to enchant totem him, but the terror blade, he can just rip straight through with impunity. He can go straight in on that time. Hello, Shadow Shaman. Repelled and kept alive, actually, there by the Omni Knights, so not going to get brought down by the Monkey King. Serpent Wards were thrown onto some ancients, it appears, in the Dream Coil. Oh, FY. Up onto the trees. Dagon is available. Give the vision there with the orb again, but he jumps off the trees. A tiny toss. The Omni Knight forward, and they find the kill. Beautiful stuff from VG. Finally bringing down that FY Monkey King, but in the meantime, bottom lane is getting pushed in by the Queen of Pain and Earthshaker. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> What's happening in chat? Why are there so many South Americans here? What's happening? What's happening? Nice smoke here from LGD. Move forward, find the Rasta. Easy pick off, kill him off. Move towards tier two bottom lane. Tiny looking for the side swipe. Puck wants to blink in with the shiver's guard. Trying to give vision there. The orb forward. Looking for another play. Not going to jaunt to it though. Three dire heroes waiting in the wings. Terrorblade coming from the north. Monkey King going to join as well. Sprinting down towards the tier two. As Puck blinks out. Maybe found here. Maybe finds the Omni Knight, though, with a good Fisher Ice Blast. Well, the Soul Burn from the Orchid that pops him in the end. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. That's your Omni dead now for 50 seconds. Terror Blade Metamorphs is still going for quite some time. Tiny. A sock your ass, Aghanim Scepter. Buyback status, how are we looking? No one. Rasta has it, and that's it. Shadow Shaman is the only one in the radium with buyback. So this tier 3, likely just going to fall here with no glyph available. Terror Blade up on the high ground. Monkey can pop his ultimate in the background. Shadow Shaman going to die. Nope, still alive. Uh, Diffuser Blade, little hits there. Going to be annoying, but the Barons are falling. Blink got cancelled, it looks like. Oh, Shaker Echo Slam hits no one. Now the AA is dead as well. Sonic Wave is good, but Snowball forward. Paparazzi goes in this. Puck. Skirting around the outside of this fight, but Tusk is already dead. Terraflade Invis with his Silver Edge clears up the uh, nice little Serpent Wards. For the Sunder with that BKB pop, but it's trouble. It's trouble. With well, that Puck Dagon still up and running. You do have to fall back here, and it comes down to that. Whatever canceled the blink of the Earthshaker, whether it was an orb or a Serpent Ward or something. But the Blink Echo just didn't happen from Earthshaker, unfortunately for LGD. VT Gaming, they do hold on to their barracks. They could have lost an entire side of racks there, but they only lose a Tier 3. No, I'm, I'm not going to say anything that you tell me to say. <laughs> Hola, amigos. ¿Cómo está? Mm, that's literally all the Spanish I know. <laughs> Apart from the rude words, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna be rude on stream, you know. Invis from the Omni scouts out the Queen of Pain there as they do fall back up towards their side of the river through their own jungle. Viva la Peru. 
Oh, what what was it called? Um. Uh. Wait. Is it Pisco? It's Pisco, right? Pisco is Peruanos. Smoke out from the Radiant, looking in towards Roshan. It's popped there from the high ground Earthshaker. They know someone's lurking to their right hand side, but Monkey King, yeah. He sees what's happening. They know what's going on. Tusk throws the shards, blinks forward aggressively. Snowball there as well. TB not going to get caught by the silence, though. Hit by the snowball. He can BKB Sundra. He can turn around with this Omni Knight. Silenced up and all oh, nearly killed off. No, no. still brought down eventually. This is going to be Roshan for the dive team, it looks like. Oh, but like Echo! In he goes! Victoria finds the jump, but it's not enough damage. The Queen of Pain still has a Sonic Wave holding onto it. Monkey King, where's your ulti? Craggy? Is that a Craggy prop? Did he just get Craggy? Is that really happening right now? Oh, the Terror Blade can still do the damage, though. Pumping out the right clicks. Here comes the deep. Paparazzi in trouble. Broken now by that Silver Red from the Terror Blade as the jump away from the puck gets some safety for her. Queen of Pain trying to chase forward. Roshan still available here for the Dire team if they want to go for it. But it looks like they will retreat, collect the gem, fall back and wait. But that Monkey King, did he really get hit by the craggy exterior as he tried to ulti? Because that is disgusting. Maybe it was just an avalanche. Maybe it was something else. He got hit by the Hex and the Shackles afterwards. But I think he, uh... I think he propped the craggy. What a sick skill. Don't even have to cast it. Just let someone hit you, then you die. Worthy tribute. Radiance bottom shrine is under attack. Radiance bottom shrine is <laughs> Terror! Wow, this terrible! I've never seen a terrible build like this. Like BKB, Manta, Dragonlance—they're all normal. I've seen Shadow Blades before, but going for the full Silver Edge and then going into the Bloodthorn afterwards. No butterfly. No MKB. <laughs> Twitch chat, you're being funny today, aren't you? I'm not gonna say rude words. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna swear in Tagalog. I'm not gonna swear in Spanish. It's not happening. What does Tiny have now? A full BKB, moving into Daedalus. Should give him a little more free reign in these fights to actually do some downs. We've not seen much from Paparazzi. This has been really the Ori show. On the puck from Vici Gaming, dictating the pace of the game as AA is blown up mid. Wanders down a little bit too far, it looks like there, as I'm being attacked by a moth. It's flew in the window and wants to run straight into my mouth. Get out of here. Jeez Louise. Jump in. Puck once more. Queen of Pain, you all up into the air. There's a good Fisher and a Battle Strike as well. Coming through from Monkey King, the Black Echo. Captain with Tiny. They've got BKB, Monkey King, and an ulti to throw if they really want to. K98 throws out. That's ultimate. But Queen of Pain is dead. The Mega Kill Streak taken away. And they've got to keep chasing here. The Guardian Angel only catching the Omni Knight. Monkey King jumps forward. The Fisher, beautiful there. Catches and splits. They jump forward again. Tusk blinks away though, and Puck has the face shift. They want to catch more. Paparazzi might be the target, and it will be. The Tiny brought down low and finally kill. Three, four, one. Maybe two if you count the AA that started things off. But this should finally unlock the Roshan pit for the Dire team. Radiant have been battling around this for so long, desperately wanting it, needing it to push that high ground. And it'll be the Terror Blade that will claim it in the end, it appears. So it will be the Monkey King that takes the Aegis and the Cheese. Not the Terror Blade, who feels pretty much impervious with BKB, Manta, and Sunder at this point, as he's yet to take his 25 talent, still half a level away from that. What did Monkey King go for? 40 damage, attack speed, and a bit of health. All 
pretty normal stuff. <laughs> no, refries, I'm not saying that. Wobuji dao. Wobuji dao. Very rude. Very, very rude. Terra Blade. Oh, he's, he's invis, not silver edged. Tiny has no Shadow Blade for 15 seconds. Ice Blast, stun, break. The BKB is there. They toss the TB. The monkey jumps though. Now they're going forward. The Hex onto the Monkey King. Serpent Wars drops the Ice Shard to block. Aparazzi's kept alive. But that is another BKB charge gone. Down to eight seconds on cooldown for one minute. And this is Aegis Cheese pushing up onto your high ground. Queen of Pain should be given the cheese here, right? There we go. Now maybe gets handed the Gouda. And they smoke in just northeast of the Radiant base. And they swipe through to the bottom lane of Rax. In comes the Terra Blade. Illusions are going with the Metamorphosis. Clear the creep wave from Monkey King Ultimate. With the Bound of Strike, there's the Shivers Guard. Maybe as well. This Fisher looks good with the Echo onto three. The Ice Blast flies through. All oh, the Snowball saved, but it drags them into battle. This Guardian Angel could be used for them. There is no there is no Ice Blast. There's no Shatter on them. It's only the Tusk that was caught. The Dream Call is on four. Maybe. Oh, there's no cheese. Whoa, 50 HP blinks away. Somehow escapes. Another sick battle of strike. Monkey has the Aegis still in hand. Terra Blade holds his ground. Sunder available. Turns back to fight. Batters away at Michi Gaming. They're held inside their base. The lane of Rax, it's gone. Reserves depleted here as the Radiant have very little in the tank. No ultis out. No ultis remaining. Only the Walrus Punch to save their lives and the dire. They sweep in, they take bot racks, they lose the cheese, but they hold the Aegis still on the Monkey King. So they can go for more down the mid lane if they want to. There's the butterfly. Finally coming through from the Terra Blade. He's going to go S and Y as his final item. Swap the treads out, get the S and Y. We see this a lot from Chinese players, but very, very few Western players do this. Is the very, very late game S and Y for the, your yes. your boots, basically. And then you have a TP scroll or you have boots of travel just in your backpack and you swap them in and out. This is a very kind of Chinese style... I don't want to call it, you know, meta or... It's just a little thing they do, you know? It's a, it's a nuance. It's a nuance of their gameplay. Actually, it might have been Ame that I saw do it previously as well for the TI Chinese qualifiers. Maybe it was the semi-finals? He, he was fa yeah, he was Faceless Void. He had Mask of Manus at the start, and it went to like 75 minutes or something, and he sold his boots for the set. Yeah, it was, it was Ame. He loves this SNY to be swapped out, or swapped in, for the treads to be swapped out. LGD want to end this, and they want to end it now. They are already one game up, remember, this is the best of three, so if they win this, they progress through to the semi-finals. Vici Gaming want to hold on. They want to go to Hamburg. They want to go to ESL 1. The first major of the season. Queen of Pain shivers to clear out the creep wave. Does have the level 25, 60% lifesteal talent as well. But look at that. Loses two-thirds of her HP immediately to the puck. Just one jump in with a Dagon level 5. So much damage straight off the bat. And where is the Quop now? Going back to Shrine all on her own. With Aegis being reclaimed, this might be time for the Dyer just to back up a little bit. Bide their time, wait for the right moment to strike. Go for maybe a sneaky smoke play. Look for someone, catch them with the Echo Slam. Because Vici Gaming, the onus, it's on them to go and move outside of their base to try and claim any kind of territory on this map. So here is the four-man wait around bottom lane for someone to show, but it's a, rep it's a repelled Omni Knight. You're not going to be able to kill him.
Heine didn't use his ulti. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. Now, what's the range on GA? We've seen some pretty awkward Guardian Angels this game where they've caught only the Omni or they've caught only one hero. And it is a pretty small area of effect. Maybe could have considered the Blink Dagger on the Omni Knight, but he needed... Solar Crest to try Roshan. They needed the Lotus Orb. Albert is pretty good as well here, but there's BKBs that are being pressed preemptively and very quickly out by the Dire team. Smoke out of the base, though. Vici Gaming, they're going to go for a risky play. Something they need to do. I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago that well, it is really down to them to make a play like this, but there's the BKB out from the Monkey King. He doesn't have a Shadow Blade. Can't really jump up on the trees either. The rest of his team, they're not on the way. So that is Monkey King dead with his BKB and ult on cooldown. But what did the Radiant spend? They spent the BKB on Tiny. The fight's kicking off. Terrorblade Sonic Wave there from the Queen of Pain. The Snowball, it does save the Tusk, but the Puck is there with the Dagon Zap back onto the crop. Can they blink forward aggressively looking for more? No. They wait and bide their time. That's now Omni dead. For the trade-off of the Monkey King, both of them have buyback. But that was Tiny BKB. And Serpent Wards. Both falling there. Both being used for the jump in onto the Terror Blade. This could be a really big pick off. Sunder. No. Stun. Shackled. Kill. Great play by Vichy Gaming. Find the Terror Blade up on your ramp. With no one behind him to save him, he was left high and dry. <laughs> Just send your illusions mid. Hold the creep wave. Go on. Drag the creep wave away. Make sure there is no push from the mid lane. No. Wait, are you dragging your creep wave bot lane? No. Slams to the slaughter. They're going to die. <laughs> oh, it's pretty nifty, honestly. So now mid lane's not pushing into tier two. There is no opening for Paparazzi and his crew to go in. They have to come and clear bottom lane, which they do so. Observer Ward's still over towards... It's a nice little spot. Hey, hey, where are you going, you little Got fucks? It. No, you're meant, to, you're meant to go and follow your friends this way. That's naughty. Now there are four range creeps mid. That's naughty. Bad boy. These two, right? Ability. Yeah. Naughty. LGD. Invis Monkey King holding the gem. Queen of Pain here, very far forward. Has the BKB purchased though? 10 seconds duration. Freshly bought. Terror Blade TPing into danger. Manta BKB. Oh, the TB is outplayed them here. Maybe they were held in place. Like Echo with the Ice Blast landing on their head. Tusk is obliterated. For a little bit more, though, the puck is going to join away in the back end. The tiny's battling with the monkey king, but this isn't a battle you win. He's dead for 100 seconds. He does have buyback, though. I don't think the Rasta is going to be as lucky. Oh, maybe. He's got the blink up. Moves to the west, but the Shivers Guard is there. Yule Scepter can cancel the TP. No, it can't. Sick repel from the Omni Knight. Oh, the Fisher and the Yules. Omni has given his life to save his Rasta. I'm not sure how worthwhile this is, but okay. I guess Omni has buyback and Rasta doesn't. But still, that's a big team fight win for LDD. And Vici Gaming again being forced back into their base to defend their high ground. Buyback from Tiny and the Omni Knight, but Terra Blade roaring away at this tier 3 tower and look how quickly it falls. There's a good Hex into the Ether Shock. Puck is ready to go in, but the BKB, the Sunder back on to Paparazzi, turns it in. Tiny has to retreat while Earth Checker Invis here being zapped down by Ori, but they can't see him anymore with the Ice Blast flying through. Is that going to connect onto Tiny? It does in the Fountain. Radiant moves the Melorax top lane. Terra Blade clears up the Rasta as well, and this looks like it's game over. 
Hulk fires back after dying to this Earthshaker who has played out of his mind the entire game. They chase on the top lane. Oh, the AA. And the silence there from TB. Huck wants to go in for a little bit more, but Ori is just being kited and chased. No more face shift, no more Yules. The soul burn will finish off the puck. 120 seconds without your fairy dragon. And with only Tiny and Tusk to defend the base, GG is called. LGD will defeat VG Gaming 2 to nothing in this best of three and progress through to the semifinals. Amazing game by them. Absolutely spot on. A little bit of a wonky draft from Vichy Gaming with a tiny, but you know, it, it, it wasn't awful. It wasn't awful. Ori, very good job on the puck. Pretty much manhandled, maybe. Tried to dictate the pace of the game. Tried to get things up and running. 214 on the Omni Knight wasn't too great with a Midas Lotus Solar Crest. Still not sure about the Lotus Orb. Maybe a Blink or a Force Dagger. Uh, force, a Force Dagger? Yes. Force Dagger. A Force Staff would have been good there. But o overall, you know, both teams played their draft well. Just LGD had the better pick-off, sniping, decision-making the mid-game. They knew what they needed to do. And they had this. They had the three core. They had three huge damage dealers. Monkey, Quop, and TV. Vichy Gaming only had two. Tusk and Omni, both very utility and very kind of saving-based. The Rasta, of course, very kind of pushing and disable-based. Tiny and Puck were their only real damage dealers. But with that, We'll take a short break, and we'll be back in... Oh, wait a second. Do we start at 7 a.m.? There might be about 50 minutes to an hour-long break now between series. This is like a kind of mini LAN qualifier in China, so they're running to a pretty kind of tight schedule where they're playing games like on the hour, every hour kind of thing. So I'll get back to you. I'll try and find out exactly what's happening. But the next best of three is LFY against Vichy J Thunder coming up in a little while, hopefully. <laughs> 